Mark your calendars. Car cruises, parish festivals, and vacation Bible schools are back and better than ever. The staff of The Catholic Accent has your official 2022 Diocese of Greensburg Summer Event Guide. Plus, five places to take your family on a spiritual tour this summer. Which shrines are attracting thousands to the power and the beauty of the Roman Catholic liturgy? And opening our hearts and minds to the first part of Mass. The Liturgy of the Word is when the Lord speaks to His people. Coming up, you hear it, but are you listening with your heart? The Accent on Air starts right now. Welcome to the Accent on Air Summer Event Guide. I'm Jennifer Mealy. Parish festivals like the St. Agnes Bazaar in North Huntingdon draw hundreds of visitors and earn parishes thousands of dollars each summer. It's also a special time for families to enjoy the community of their church, a much needed change from the isolation of the COVID-19 pandemic. The team of the Catholic Accent has spent many weeks compiling your official 2022 Diocese of Greensburg Summer Event Guide. Log on to theaccentonline.org for a list of other parish festivals, vacation Bible schools, and summer tour destinations. Here at the Catholic Accent, we use communication to fuel evangelization. And speaking of fuel, Bishop Kulik is starting the engines on a car cruise scheduled for Father's Day weekend. Here's John Zilka. This is a 1936 Dietrich Packard 8 convertible, one of five known to exist and it's just one of many classic cars that you can see at the very first Diocese of Greensburg Summer Car Show. The Diocese of Greensburg Summer Car Show is scheduled for Father's Day weekend, Saturday, June 18, 2022, at Christ Our Shepherd Center, 2900 Seminary Drive in Greensburg. Since becoming bishop, many times people will stop me and say to me, Bishop, are you having a car show on the diocesan level? And not only are we going to have cars, but there's going to be a wonderful assortment of food, entertainment, and activities, even for our younger members and our families. I'm going to hopefully have a couple of my own cars at the car show this year. Of course, I'm going to have the 1966 Pontiac Le Mans, which is a very special car to me. That was the car that was my grandfather's and my grandmother gave it to me on my 18th birthday. And I'm hoping that uh, the Chief is going to return my 1949 Pontiac Streamliner Deluxe. It currently is at the Pontiac Museum in Pontiac, Illinois, but we're working on having it back and bringing it home for the weekend of the car show. I see the car show as a great opportunity for evangelization using the theme of, of cars and everyone may not be a car enthusiast or have a classic or an antique car that they would like to enter into uh, the show, but certainly I think a lot of people love the opportunity to come and to look at some of the cars, but also just to spend time uh, talking with other people from across the region. We are very thankful to our sponsors who help support our evangelization mission with this car show. And thank you to our event sponsor, Valero Services, who provides vehicle repair, service and special customization. These sponsors are particularly important because proceeds from the car show will support emergency relief in Ukraine. Any of the profits that come from the car show that we would make will help to support uh, people in Ukraine and also help support the refugee situation. As you know, many people are fleeing from the country. Millions have fled into the neighboring countries and even uh, there may be some soon coming to the United States. So our hope is that any funds that are raised as a profit will not remain with us, but will be used to help uh, the situation in Ukraine. From noon to seven, visitors can enjoy food trucks like Big Black Grill, Sunny Shaved Ice and Pierogies, Kona Ice, Rocket Kettle Corn, plus beverage vendors will be on site all day. Crafts for the kids start at 3 p.m., awards are at 4 p.m., followed by an outdoor mass and special blessing of fathers at 4.30. Pre-register your car to reserve a free spot and pre-register your family to receive a free t-shirt. Visit dioceseofgreensburg.org slash car show for details. I'm Mary Siemens, behind the wheel and on assignment to find the top five spiritual tour destinations this summer. And they're all within driving distance. I'm Cliff Gorski, executive editor of The Catholic Accent. Coming up, the results of a survey answered by 10,000 Catholics in our diocese about the pastoral connectivity of our parishes. What the survey says about faith formation 
music, homilies, and ministries, and keeping young people connected to the faith. I'm Robin Mall, focusing on the young church. Coming up, find out why an entire family from Fayette County decided to become Catholic. Valero Service is currently hiring talented individuals interested in putting their skills to use in the customization and fabrication of state-of-the-art vehicles. Opportunities include welding, carpentry, mechanical service, electronic technologies, collision repair, painting, parts, and inspections. Valero Service is an in-demand customization service center for many companies across the country in need of specialty vehicles. Call Valero Service at 724-468-1010 and put your skills to work today. Even right now, I'm a senior graduating in college, like out of St. Vincent. I want to do my four years here again. That's how, that's how much I love this place. I've like had so many experiences, and I've met so many wonderful people here. And I'm just so thankful that they've like helped me grow into who I am now. St. Vincent is just a place where if you're here, you're just magnetized toward positivity and openness and kindness to people. It's just what happens, and that's why, I mean, that's what a home is. So that's why St. Vincent's my home. Ford Business Machines technicians are never satisfied with anything less than perfection. Which is better, one or two? They take the time to fully understand the scope of the issue and make it crystal clear that you will be able to view your documents at a level that you should expect. Now which is better? That's the one right there. Don't settle for less when it comes to your company's image. Call today for a well-defined analysis of your current picture. Over the last few months, the Diocese of Greensburg has been undertaking a massive effort to collect feedback about the future of our church. It's called the Synodal Process, and it's all part of the Holy Father's initiative to develop a synodal church. Cliff Gorski shows us the process and gives us a sneak peek at the results. Close to 10,000 surveys were submitted online and through the mail, and more than 1,000 parishioners gathered at 11 town halls across the Diocese of Greensburg. The faithful are answering the call from Pope Francis to let the Holy Spirit guide our thoughts, share our ideas, and help us to dream about the future of our church. With the Holy Spirit guiding the discussions, Bishop Kulik moved from group to group at each session, hearing directly from parishioners about their thoughts on shaping the future of our church. He heard about parish presence in the community, ministries that are needed, and the formation opportunities that may draw people, especially young adults and the youth, back to the faith. And our future, particularly the role of laity, with the decline in the numbers of active clergy. In addition to the in-person town hall meetings, thousands of surveys were collected from parishes and completed online, and they gauge the opinions on topics like homilies, music ministries, faith formation, and parish communications. In fact, early results show that 80% of those responding believe their parish effectively communicates with them on a regular basis. This process, as I've been saying, has not only been a wonderful opportunity to fulfill the request of our Holy Father as a diocesan church, but it has also been a wonderful opportunity for us here as the Diocese of Greensburg in this transition of a new bishop to look and to hear and to listen to the needs of the people so that as we move forward here on the diocesan level, we can begin to set priorities and strategies that are based on what we hear from the people. And that is most important to me, that we begin from the grassroots and work from the bottom up, not the top down. Later in the year, the bishop will present a summary report to the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. The USCCB will make a presentation from all dioceses to the Synod of Bishops at the Vatican. The two-year process concludes in October of 2023, when the Synod of Bishops adopts a final document designed to guide the church into the future. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hearing the word of the Lord at Mass and watching their friends break bread and receive communion in chapels like this drew a young family to the Catholic faith. Um, the reason we decided to convert to Catholicism is actually, um, I would say, it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, my mom, she passed away a few years ago, um, and I know it was really important to her, uh, her faith, and just having that background of always going to church here, it just it's always felt like 
like I said before, like my base religion, that like my base belief system. So we decided to send our kids to Con Area when Maddox was entering kindergarten. We came to an open house here and we fell in love with it that, that day. We, we came and we talked to everybody and it just seemed like a perfect fit for our family. She came in preschool, I came in kindergarten. I like that we get to believe in God. I like that we pray because we all believe in about God and we can all talk about the same thing. I was over the moon when Mandy messaged me and said that they wanted to become Catholic. I knew them through the school and I know their daughters and they're in my children's class as well at Con Area. And from the beginning they were all in. They could not wait. It's very, very clear that they truly want to put Christ in the center of their marriage relationship and in their family life. Yeah, I think we're um, a very close family and we like to spend a lot of our free time together doing things together and um, it really provides us as a way to really have that complete sense of family and unity uh, with God as, as we're able to do this together. So it's, it's nice to be able to do it all at the same time rather than kind of piecemeal. So it's, it's been a great experience. They have been so dedicated. Their sponsors have been just so engaged the entire time. And I know without a doubt that they're going to be so involved in the life of our church. And it's so encouraging because they are a young family to know that they're gonna be a witness to a lot of people. Mary would walk us through step by step in the mass, what we do, why we do it. So that was uh, really interesting and I think we're uh, from my perspective, I, I feel like we're really blessed because us as being a little bit older coming and we're able to really kind of comprehend and put everything together in a little bit better of a manner. So it's been really nice to learn not only what we're doing, but why we're doing it. Yeah, because she, she'll she always point out, this we do this because in the Bible, this is what it says. Mm -hmm. And so then this is why we do it this way, which was really nice to have that, that biblical explanation for the reason that they do things. Now that I'm able to be confirmed in my beliefs and my faith, and then also um, receive the communion. It's, I feel really happy and really ecstatic about that. But we're very lucky and very blessed. So mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been a really positive experience. We've had a lot of support. Yeah. I'm Jerome Wyko in the kitchen with Deacon Andrew Corriente, who won the Great American Baking Show Holiday Edition 2020. Today he's going to show us a snickerdoodle recipe perfect for this summer. Plus many say catechesis is the key to understanding and living the faith. Coming up next, we examine the first part of Mass, the Liturgy of the Word, where God speaks to us. Stay with us, The Accent on Air will be right back. This summer, Christ Our Shepherd Center in Greensburg is the place for Ultimate Thursdays. Young men in high school from across the Diocese of Greensburg are invited to join us for three evenings of Ultimate Frisbee, food, and fun. Plus, each Ultimate Frisbee match includes a halftime talk from our seminarians. Register for one or all three Ultimate Thursdays this summer at greensburgpriest.org. At Cinti Pro Jester Chiropractic Center, we use technology to analyze a patient's spine. It impulses at a high frequency, low speed into the spine. Here you can see the patient progress and improvement along the way. We have Westmoreland Live O2, which is oxygen therapy. Inflammation causes 90% of someone's pain. So you're going to see change with low back pain, knees, shoulders, legs, feet. We've been here for 25 years. We're brothers, and we look forward to taking care of your family. Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Greensburg is hosting its 20th annual Paul R. Smy Memorial Golf Outing on Friday, August 12th at Ligonier Country Club. Enjoy a day of fun and food on the greens, featuring themed holes including the Pope Putt and the terrific Pierogi Hole. All proceeds from this event provides emergency assistance funds to those in need throughout our diocese. Join us Friday, August 12th at Ligonier Country Club. Sponsorship and ticket information can be found at ccharitiesgreensburg.org. 
During the Liturgy of the Word, we explore what we need to grasp about Christ's mission and what we are called to do as His followers. This summer is our opportunity to be warmed by His Word. Most Catholics already know that the Liturgy of the Word, in most cases, begins with two readings, one each from the Old and New Testament. But what you might not know is that the lectionary is designed to provide the faithful with many of the readings from the totality of sacred scripture over a three-year cycle. We're told as Catholics <laughs> that we don't know the Bible. Well, I'll be honest with you, I think more and more Catholics are understanding the Bible. When we fully participate in the Mass, we should really be listening to the Word of God and allowing it to sink in. And that could mean putting on your metaphorical hearing aid. I wear a hearing aid, <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, if I forget my hearing aid, it's very difficult for me to hear the Word, but of course, I prepare in advance. But by the same token, I think that uh, we have to really look at ourselves and say, what can I do to hear better what is being you know, read and proclaimed? After Jesus ascended into heaven, his apostles continued their work proclaiming the Word of God. Guided by the Holy Spirit, a former tax collector, an evangelist, a doctor, and a teenager went on to write the four Gospels and became Saints Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Book of Gospels is carried aloft with honor in the entrance procession and placed at the altar until it is read by an ordained minister. The Gospel is a very important and indeed the central part of the Liturgy of the Word. Through the Gospel, we hear not only about how Jesus calls His disciples, but how He calls each and every one of us every day of our life to live in tune with God's words and His commands, and how Jesus proclaims the truth of God. The Liturgy of the Word is meant to be a call to action in our daily lives, but we need God's help and intervention in our lives to actually live out His mission. Known by Catholics as the Intercessions, the Prayers of the Faithful, or the Universal Prayers, is a time during each Mass when we recognize we cannot do it alone. It's always pleasing to God when we reach out to Him in need, because so many times in our lives we face things that we have no control over and we can't do things alone. We need to do it with each other and most importantly with God. I can remember the prayers of the faithful when I was a kid. I gave my, I read the petitions for the first time in second grade at my first communion. I was so nervous I memorized the whole petition. <laughs> I still have that petition too. It's in a little, it's in my little rosary case from my first communion. It's just the beautiful thing when we really step back and think about that beautiful transition of listening to God's Word and then expressing our needs to Him. The homily is yet another opportunity for us to allow the Word of Jesus Christ to be infused into our hearts and minds. Homilists have extensively studied the teachings of Jesus as a model for contemporary interpretation, and they're trained in methods of preaching for the benefit of the faith community. The homilist adds to that his own understanding of the stories and teaching, and prays about what Jesus is saying to him personally. Something that I have always done is to try to put that into one sentence. A writer would call it a topic sentence that is key for every tome that was ever written. Having one focal point to take away is I think what each of us should try to do. Like what is Jesus saying to me today as the culmination of this collective information that I have received. Summer is an opportunity to take a vacation from the hustle and feel the warmth of God's words in our hearts so that when we receive Jesus in the most blessed sacrament, we're able to conform our lives in the likeness of Christ. I'm Mary Siemens, behind the wheel and on assignment with summer road trip ideas for spiritual tours. You can start your spiritual journey this summer by visiting the largest display of relics in the world outside the Vatican at the St. Anthony Chapel in Pittsburgh. 
more than 5,000 relics of the apostles and martyrs, including a piece of Jesus' crown of thorns, Mary's veil, and particles of the true cross. In addition to the relics, there are life-size stations of the cross, hand-carved in Germany, and beautiful stained glass windows depicting the apostles. If you make the trip to St. Anthony Chapel to see the relics, you may be inspired to invite your favorite saint to pray for you on your journey of faith. Heading east across the state of Pennsylvania, you will arrive at the National Center for Padre Pio in Bartow. It is a scenic and spiritual destination where you can experience the powerful presence of Padre Pio. This beloved Italian friar received the five wounds of Christ on his body and was known for his devotion to confession and for providing spiritual guidance. The museum and cultural center contain the largest collection of Padre Pio relics in the United States. Pilgrims can also visit Our Lady of Grace Chapel, a replica of the chapel in the Franciscan Friary of San Giovanni Rotondo, Italy, and view an actual confessional used by Padre Pio. Traveling one hour south to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, there is a place where the most powerful stories of all time come to life on stage. The Sight and Sound Theater features a 200-foot wraparound stage and 40-foot tall sets. The mission of Sight and Sound is to bring the Bible to life and to bring families together. Hundreds of live animals are used in each production, including horses, camels, sheep, and pigs. A brand new show, David, can be seen from now until the end of the year. Follow the life of this young shepherd as he defeats Goliath, becomes a fearless warrior, and is crowned the anointed king of Israel. This is the perfect place to go this summer for families or entire parishes. You will not be disappointed. A trip to Washington, D.C. will renew and strengthen your faith as you visit the St. John Paul II National Shrine. An expansive exhibit highlights his visits to 129 countries, his support to end communism throughout Europe, and his pioneering of International Youth Days, which attracted tens of millions of youth. Through a combination of videos, artifacts, images, and interactive displays, Pilgrim's journey into the remarkable life and papacy of Carol Wojtyła. A trip to Washington, D.C. will also take you to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. As the Patronal Church of the United States Catholics, this place of pilgrimage and prayer is visited by one million people annually. Individuals and groups are welcome to take a free guided tour, which includes visits to the chapels on the crypt level and the great upper church. It also includes information about the history of the shrine, the architecture, and the sacred artwork. For more information about my top five spiritual tour destinations, visit theaccentonline.org. Safe travels for you and your family as you make this journey of faith. The Accent on Air has a recipe from this Franciscan friar who has garnered national attention on a baking show. Stay with us. The Accent on Air will be right back. My great-great-grandparents started Rizzo's 84 years ago, and we're still here today. Same business, same family, same location. We have our lines of sauce and pasta in the stores. We have a banquet facility. We have a line of chocolates. The business really has expanded, but consistent is the tradition and the quality. We're about tradition here at Rizzo's, and we invite you to come start a tradition yourself. Hello, my name is Ashley Frederick. I'm the third generation family member of Unity Printing located in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. At Unity Printing, we produce digital and offset printing, screen printing, embroidery, signage, trophies awards, plaques, glass etching, and promotional items. At Unity Printing, we produce all of our products in-house there before we can assure that your branding matches across all of our different product lines. In addition, we have a very high accuracy rate, the rate in which we complete jobs without any mistakes, which is always above 99%. I'm Jordan Wyko in the kitchen with Deacon Andrew Corriente, who won the Great American Baking Show Holiday Edition in 2020. Today, he is going to show us a snickerdoodle recipe perfect for this summer. All right, Deacon Andrew, what do we do first? We have two sticks of butter, unsalted, half a stick of cream cheese. Then we'll take our one and a half cups of sugar, three-fourths teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of fine sea salt, and if you want, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Now take your spatula and try to sc scoop down the sides of the bowl. What got you into baking? God, basically. Yeah. <laughs> My first year as a friar, I was sitting in the chapel 
and I was just meditating and then a thought came into me, which was, why don't you cook something? Before I knew it, I was waking up at like 5 a.m. before prayer and baking cheesecakes, cookies, cakes. We're gonna do one egg and then you're gonna separate an egg. I understand. Okay, okay. Crack one egg into here, please. You want the yolk. I just want the yolk. No. Nope. A good way of doing that too, brother, is just to go against, yeah. If Try it again. There you go. Try it one more time. There is you go. Is this hard boiled? Are you messing with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> and then, there we go. And if you could put in one tablespoon of vanilla. Right into the egg. Yes. And then go ahead and slowly pour that in. All right. We're scraping, scraping first. Scraping it and then put the flour okay. in, right. yes. Now, is it typical to add cream cheese to snickerdoodles? No, it isn't. Okay. So it gives it a little bit more of like this luscious, buttery, like smooth texture inside of there. Uh, so that's one of the things that I like to put in there. The egg yolk gives it another um, added element of like velvety texture. Bet you guys didn't know that. <laughs> Extra fat gives, um, <laughs> makes things taste better. Now put it back in the mixer. And just put it the lowest possible first, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and scoop our cookie dough. Okay. So what I like to do is, I like to take like one of these uh, ice cream scoopers. That way all the cookies are uniformed. Okay. But then I brush it against the side. There you are, buddy. Now, if you didn't have an ice cream scooper. You could go ahead and use uh, two tablespoons and then make it about like three tablespoons-ish. We're not baking these yet, actually. We're just gonna chill them first. Right, right. Yeah, so you can put them right next to each other. And whisk together the cinnamon sugar. Yep. And how I like to do this is basically I take the dough ball okay. and then I dip it in here. And then I dip the other side and then put it over on the tray. Okay. okay. We'll go ahead and throw these at the oven, uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 plus minutes. And then we'll rotate it halfway so that it has even browning. Sprinkle extra cinnamon sugar because that makes the world better. So now that we have done every step, I think it's time to taste. Yes, let's go ahead. All right, it's softer than mm -hmm. what I'm normally used to mm -hmm. when I have a snickerdoodle. Yeah. Because of the cream cheese. Correct. And the egg yolk also. Oh yeah. Yeah. That excellent egg yolk that I separated. Egg beautifully done. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Deacon Andrew, thank you so much for allowing me to uh, get into your kitchen, helping you make these. I am definitely going to try these at home. They're that good. Awesome. Awesome. To watch this show and read more about it, visit theaccentonline.org. Thanks for watching. Don't see it under the apple tree with anyone else but me till I come marching home. Home, 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 sweet home. Forget the men who died, who made that right to me, and I gladly stand. Shindor, I'm going to leave you. God bless America. America, bless God.